Hi, child of God, you are welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. All the contents that we create on this channel are purely Christian content, and I encourage you, if you're a believer, subscribe to this channel. It says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, redemption does not excuse you from warfare. Redemption actually fortifies you for warfare. And so for those of us who are redeemed, we are not necessarily fighting to win. I told you last Sunday that come what may, we will win. However, we must know that we are fighting from victory. Because the one who actually won was Christ. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The devil is a defeated foe. But you see, it's in the nature of Satan to rebel. So he will not relax and say, oh, I've been defeated. He wants to find out if you know. And so the reason for a service like this is to make sure every one of us know. So that when he comes, you will tell him, I'm aware. And you will keep your victory and maintain your stand in dominion and in all that God has made available to you. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible said, Be sober, be vigilant. It said, For your adversity, the devil, he said, He prowls like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. Yes, you are a king, yes, you are a priest. Yes, you have dominion, but the devil is knocking and checking to find out who knows. And so if it comes and you do not know, you will become a victim. So the Bible admonishes you ahead of time. He said, be sober, be vigilant. In fact, Paul reiterating the same emphasis, he said, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We know he's working over time to bring us into captivity. But a generation of warriors will rise that will tell the devil, remain on the floor. You have been defeated. We will not give you any chance to exercise tyranny. Ephesians 4.27, he said, give him no place to the devil. You will not give him half a chance because you will live to fulfill everything God has apportioned for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, one thing you need to understand about warfare is that you don't choose the battle. It's the battle that chooses you. If it's a battle that one chooses, some of us would have avoided it. But it's unfortunate that the Bible calls him your enemy. I don't know when we met. I don't know when I had a misunderstanding with him. But he has taken the position of being your sworn enemy. He said, your adversary, the devil. He has put himself as your enemy. And he has brought a battle to your doorstep. And as a noble, you must fight. Nobles, we don't back out. We stand to defend our territory. You don't back out. He came with a fight. You will give him a fight of his life. Ephesians 6 12, the Bible said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. When did you get into the ring? The war chose you. And so your duty is to prepare to fight and to secure and defend your victory. 2 Corinthians 3, 10 verse 3 He said, though we walk in the flesh We do not war after the flesh Though we walk in the flesh We do not war That means the moment you put on this flesh You became an enemy of Satan And when you gave your heart to Christ You became a sworn enemy This is why you must understand The fortification required For you to walk in victory Listen those making impact are not making impact by luck. They are making impact by dominion. The devil fought them and keeps fighting, yet they keep winning. Every time we testify, that same spot could have been the pot, pot of our defeat. The reason is a testimony is because we stood our ground, we enforced our victory, and the devil went back. And so everybody testifying is a champion. He conquered. That's why he testified. That same spot others fail because the bible says if you faint in the day of trouble it's not because your god is not strong 
He said, it's because your strength is little. This is why he said, be vigilant, be sober, build capacity. There is a war at your doorstep. And if you will fulfill purpose, you must first of all conquer. The beautiful thing is that we are more than built and prepared to conquer. Everything is to our advantage. And that's why we are not fidgeting when the devil comes. We tell him, throw your best shot. You will be disappointed. Because we are walking from victory. We are not walking to victory. Somebody give the Lord a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Now for you to step into this arena of battle, there are a few things you must understand in addition to the introduction that I have given you. I'm trying to keep it a bit calm so that we can read verses of scripture. You need to have these verses and apply them. Glory to God. The first thing you need to know is your enemy. If you don't know your enemy, you may take him for granted. So it's important for you to understand him. That's why Paul said, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. If we are, we will be in trouble. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11, it said, Lest Satan shall get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That means if you don't know your enemy, he will have an advantage. And this is why many Christians who should be champions are struggling because they didn't take time to understand who the enemy is. And so the first thing I will do tonight is to show you the authority structure of Satan. And then I will show you the weapons of Satan. And then I will show you his battle strategy before I show you your own weapon and advantage. Because if you don't know who he is, even if you are using your weapon, you may misfire. Glory to God. In dealing in the demonic realm, there are two categories of entities that war against the Christian. There are demons and there are princes. Demons are servants in the demonic realm or in the realms of Satan. Princes are not servants. They are fallen angels. And so they are, even the Bible acknowledges them as dignitaries. If you study the book of Job, you are going to see that they are called dignitaries. I'm not trying to exhort Satan. I'm just telling you facts of scripture. So that you are well positioned to fight your battle. Glory to God. When you deal with demons, they don't have legality and jurisdiction. Because number one, demons are disembodied entities. And because they don't have bodies, they cannot function in any environment unless they take on another body. So the weakness of demons is that they need a body of an entity for them to function. This is why demons have to possess men in order to transmit their errand. And so when you show up, especially if a Christian is involved, they, what the first thing you do is to address the legality. We are bought with a price. The body you are trying to afflict belongs to Jesus. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, 19 and 20, it says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. And he said, we were bought with a price. So our body is no longer our own. Our body belongs to the Lord. So every time Satan tries to do anything around anybody, it's not a negotiation. He's an illegal occupant. So you show up in the name of Jesus, you kick him out. And he has no choice but to obey. Because Thank you so much for engaging this video to the end. Please, before you leave, give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. One more thing. Share this message with others to bless them. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Believers Global TV. God bless you richly as you support us. See you in our next video. We love you and celebrate you.